now the chapter number five is the wash or the wiping of over the chuffay over the shoes or uh, here it says two leather socks uh, the first hadith is narrated by Mughir ibn Shu'bah narrated by Mughir ibn Shu'bah he said once I was in the company of the Prophet he then performed ablution and I reached down to take off his socks or, or the khufayn uh, Mughir ibn Shu'bah wanted to take off his socks so he can wash his feet he said, the Prophet said leave them for I have put them on in a state of purification uh, now this hadith here uh, it's hadith Bukhari and Muslim but I would like to some people because of the uh, the translation sometimes they don't care really about the words because it wasn't make any difference according to their understanding because they understand it in a way so they don't find they say okay it's fine to 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 interpret it this meaning rather than taking the the exact wording but I will try to explain this hadith I will to read to translate it exactly the way it is in Arabic because this understanding it's it's there is different opinion about about this now uh, yeah he said leave them leave them for I have put them in a I have put them purified purified so when I put them in the socks they were purified they were clean meaning they were clean in a way hmm? but the word the right word is tahiratain purified now this hadith the majority has taken this hadith to be uh, the majority uh, except Dawood bin Ali and Abu Thawr and Al Muzani in one narration just few people who contradict the understanding of the Jamhur the Jamhur the majority say that if you have wudu if you have wudu and after you have finished wudu you put your socks leather then later on if you lose wudu you can wipe over the, the, the socks if you put your socks after you have finished after you have done wudu even the majority here now div they divide into two different opinions some of them say if you have done wudu fully yeah up to the right feet and then you wash your feet right foot you wash the right foot then you put the socks and then you put you wash the left socks and then you put the uh, the shoes or the socks or they say some of the the majority say you have to take them off and take the wudu now fully they say because when you put the first sock socks you had no you didn't have full wudu mm. the others say uh, no it's fine you can do wudu this is the majority the saying of the majority <coughs> these few people i mentioned earlier say no it has nothing to do <coughs> with wudu as long they say as long as when you put your feet inside the socks you had no any dirt on them dirt that you can see like someone urine on your feet or any any kind of dirt then it's fine you can wipe on the on this on the socks so the other will say, okay, what, what, what means that the Prophet said that I put them in the socks purified? If you say that as long as it has no dirt on them, definitely the Prophet will not put his feet in. It's like meaningless. 
it doesn't need to say that I didn't put when I put them in in the socks they were not it's meaningless that is not true why <coughs> because I think the, the this the majority here I, I will go with the opinion of these few people why because <coughs> There is nothing except purified or dirty. There is nothing in between. Is it true? It's either purified or not purified. And we all know this hadith of Abu Huraira when he was walking in Medina and he met the Prophet. He met the Prophet, so he sneaked away. He, he, he left. He didn't want to meet the Prophet. Later on, he went, <coughs> took shower, took a bath, came back to the Prophet, and the Prophet asked him, where have you been? He said, I met you, I was in a state of no purification, I didn't want you to, to meet you in that way. The Prophet said, Inna al-Muslima la yanjus. The Muslim doesn't become impure. So Muslim is always in state of purification. If he is in state of purification, if he, this person is in state of purification, that means his head is in state of purification, and his hands are in state of purification, and his feet are in state of purification. If he is not dirty, that he is pure, purified. So that is what the Prophet said. He said, I put my feet while they were purified the only way we can say this person is not purified for a muslim is if we, he has dirt on his on his body even when abu huraira was in state of janaba he was still purified this is what the prophet has said so the condition really the condition to have wudu the condition to have wudu <coughs> while uh, when, when you put the socks on is not really strong and there is hadith yes does the wiping over the socks mean woman may wipe over their hijab scarf on wiping the head in wudu the wiping of over the scarf actually is similar to wiping of the the prophet deed wipe over the scarf and over the imama the hadith of al ibn Shaba in Bukhari that the Prophet uh, wiped over his imama and Khufain and the hadith of Bilal in Abu Dawud and Musnad Ahmed that the Prophet wiped over the scarf uh, khimar uh, and there is oh yes. Does it have to be a specific style of the, the way it's done? Or no, it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be in Yeah, but uh, it doesn't have to be because the head, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he said wipe over your head, he didn't say like the way he said about the feet, mm. the, to wiping up to the ankles. So the, 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 the shoes have to be up to the ankles. Mm. But the head, even if it's not covered fully, you still can wipe over the, the head. Uh, over the scarf on the head of course if you wipe over the scarf you have wiped over the head uh, the prophet did wipe over the head and uh, it's when and woman the same thing hmm? the religion is for men and woman yeah would it be in the same way as you said i mean i'm not trying to use chaos but i'm just asking yeah. is that you know you say you put the socks on in a purified state yeah would you have to have the scarf on and purify it safe. Before, and then when you break it, we'll do then that, we'll That's what they don't say here. They don't say this. They don't say this. So here they didn't dare do that qiyas really. But uh, they don't ask, they don't uh, make it a condition. Of course, for those who accept it, because some of them, some of them will say yeah, actually that you don't ha you can't do uh, uh, wiping over the scarf unless you do part of the head first. Like the, you do part of the... Uh, the, head. the head at the beginning and then you continue like Abu Hanifa mm. you say at least uh, three three fingers at the beginning and then for him even if you don't have scarf uh, wiping over the head will be just three fingers hmm? the thing is uh, wiping is it's not necessary to wipe all the area hmm? it's not like washing so uh,
but uh, just to not uh, confuse this uh, person who is asking, does the wiping over the socks mean women may wipe over their hijab scarf? No, it doesn't. Uh, it's not because of the hadith of the wiping of the socks. It's women may wipe over their scarves because it's allowed. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala allowed us to wipe over the our uh, over the our head, huh? whether it's covered or not. And then the Prophet used to wipe over his imama and over the scarf. Huh? The hadith of Bilal doesn't say imama, it says scarf. Obviously, when you move the imama, you have to move the imama up a little bit, right? Well, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. There is nothing. So if you have there is, imama, there is some hadith that says that the Prophet moved, uh, not moved, that he wiped at the front of the head yeah. and then continued on the, on the imama. But there is hadith that says that he wiped over the imama, just only over the imama. If I have my head like this now, yeah. I can just wipe it over this. Yes, you don't have to, to move, the, to, to, to touch the, the head really. Yeah. And uh, the... Sorry, the question, I just, it's not that I'm, I'm serious, I'm yeah. not joking. You said that... Well, before it was just... No, 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 sorry. <laughs> okay. You wiped it over the head, uh, head and yeah. let's say someone doesn't have hair. Yeah, I don't say you have to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said there are osikum. He didn't say uh, in, uh, on your hair. Oh, you mentioned hair, hair. I said, yeah, I'm just... I, I was thinking maybe someone doesn't have hair, he doesn't know. No, no, no. The Allah didn't say hair. He said the head. Huh? Oh, right. okay. Whether it's covered with hair <coughs> or not. Yeah. So, uh, that is my way of talking. You see, uh, when I'm talking, I'm just uh, a person talking. But... Uh, you have to clarify things, but uh, it's it's the, the words of Allah that we have to be careful and take exactly the way they are, not the words of the human being. Hmm? <coughs> yes. When there is an order here, yeah, Prophet ordered us to do something here. Yeah? yeah. Why consider the, the opinion of the fuqaha? Well, uh, we are here sometime. There is uh, two different opinions, and we either it's either one opinion. It's totally wrong. You can see it's wrong. Huh? Still, you just say it huh? and explain why it's wrong. Some people may not see it, uh, see how why it's wrong. Huh? And if it's close, sometimes really the other opinion you don't just say, oh, it's totally wrong. He has something. He said it because based on some belief. So some people may get confused. So it's it's more it, you have to explain it in this case. Really, you have to understand. Now, when I say uh, when these people you say you have to have wudu before you put your feet in the in, in the socks, they didn't say it from their heads, huh? Just like this, you understand? It's based on something, based on the hadith, which they understood in a way and. Some people understood in a different way. So, considering the, the opinion of the fuqaha, you have they, 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 exp they try to explain something. You here. will never learn if you don't know all the opinions uh, of. You, uh, you have to try to, before you make a decision in any matter of religion, to know every single opinion. Uh, the majority, a single person, anyone who is a Muslim. Hmm? You just hear his opinion. Doesn't matter how knowledgeable or how, ign how ignorant he is. Huh? Uh, someone who ha doesn't have knowledge at all might say something which is very, which is uh, meaningful. And uh, you understand, uh, me being not knowledgeable, huh? very knowledgeable, doesn't mean that you will never understand anything. Nothing. You, you can understand nothing. The Prophet said. Uh, the, one, the people who are present in this place, the people who were present with him in Hajj, he ordered them to transmit the message for those who come after. Because some who come after, some of the people who come after them, who are not Sahaba, huh, might understand it better than them. This is the Sahaba, the most knowledgeable people. Huh? It's their language. They heard the hadith from the Prophet directly. Huh? They don't have to care about this hadith is sahih or da'if or you see it's and uh, whether the Prophet said it or not it, it was <coughs> but still the Prophet told them to give this message the way they heard it from him because some people who were not there 
You might understand it better than them. Hmm? So, so, yeah, so you, you have to take the opinion of everybody. If, if there is a, uh, you are looking at the matter and then they say the Sahaba have said something and Hassan al Basri or Abu Hanifa or Malik or you won't say, I will not say, oh, I am going to reject what because the Sahaba, I am going to stop here. The Sahaba have said it, definitely they are right. No, I will want to know what Hassan al Basri said. I will want to know what. Ibn uh, Taymiyyah has said, I will want to know what I know he has said. And definitely, I am not make, going to make my decision that I am going to do, to say what the Sahaba have said, huh? and leave what Ibn Nawawi has said, until I've looked at it, and then I make my decision. <coughs> yes, and... Uh, so that was about the putting the feet inside the socks while purified if you have any question about that or i go to the next hadith yeah do you think the purification is like cleaning from uh, example from urine because you, we have a hadith you know the people are gonna get punished about the urine you know so yeah but uh, here it's question of we are talking just about the feet. When you put the feet, when you put, yeah, he said, I put my feet in the sock in the socks while purified. Hmm? Yeah. So this is here where the difference of different opinions came. Some say purified mean having wudu. Yeah. Some say purified meaning not having najasa on them, not having any dirt on the on the feet. You understand? But, but taking wudu. Is the same. It means not having the dirt. Yeah, but we are talking just about the feet here. Yeah, what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, same. I'm talking about the feet. Yeah. So uh, this is the different opinions. Uh, the other, the other. Everybody else understand it. So I can try, try to explain to the brother. And what I'm saying, you know, yeah. if you do yeah. it, means, you know, it's, it's not having the dirt. Yeah, not having dirt on the feet. It's the same thing. Yeah. No. The prophet said, I am not going to take my sh shoes off because when I put my shoes inside the socks or inside when I put my feet in the, inside the socks or inside the shoes, they were purified. Now this purified, what does it mean? Does it mean purified meaning they were, I had, they were clean from, with wudu or meaning there was no dirt on them? You see, sometimes you have wudu. Yeah. But you have wudu, you finished wudu, and then you have dirt on your feet. You walk and you put your feet on dirt. You don't have to do wudu again, do you? You don't have to. Hmm? You just have to go and wash your feet. Because your wudu is not broken. You see, step, no, it is najasa, but you put your feet on the najasa. Huh? Putting your feet on the najasa doesn't break your wudu. It just makes your feet not clean. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to go and wash your foot only. You don't have to go and start wudu from the beginning. <coughs> Understand? So if this person has put his foot inside the shoes, yeah. Is it this one with, the, with the urine? Yeah. When say najasa about. Yeah, urine, urine is najasa, no? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Is that? It becomes the same thing. Yeah, sure. it's well, the same thing. Uh, we have two things here. Uh, if the, uh, the Prophet uh, explains to Abu Huraira that the Muslim is, is not Najis, yeah. that means is a purified. purified. Then when he spoke about only his feet, yeah. he directed only his feet. He doesn't have to say they were purified because the, the, the Muslim is already purified, all of him. Yeah, but if, these, if his feet had najasa on them, let's say he had a boy on his feet and he urinated on his feet and then he stood up and put his feet in the shoes then now without washing them now he must take off his shoes and wash them he can't just wipe over them because in this only this case hmm, his feet will not be purified so touching a dog is najis, 
it doesn't make, it doesn't break wood. Now that's what the, whether the dog is najis or not. That is one story. However, let's say any najis, if you put if you touch something that is dirty, as long as nothing stays in your hand, we believe. Not everybody believe, but some people believe that mushrik is najis. Allah subhanahu wa said, "Inna al mushrikuna najis." Now, if you touch a mushrik, anything from this mushrik. All this mushrik najis, meaning everybody, everything in him is najis, hmm? including his sweat, his, including his saliva, including his blood. Now, if you touch him in a dry day and nothing stays in your hand, it's fine. You are clean. You touch dirt, dirt touching a clean. Uh, Something. You see, if someone is pure and he touches dirt, and someone tell him, "Oh, now you are dirty." Why not the opposite? Someone dirty touches something clean. Oh, now he is clean. Huh? But the pure person, when he touches something dirty and that dirt stays in his hand, he must wash it. Part of the dirt is dirty. So when you touch someone, a kafir, and he has sweat in his hand, you have to go and wash your hand. But this is not the opinion for the majority, I know. But, but if I touch him and he is it's dry, huh? He has not, and nothing is left in my hand. It's fine. There is nothing to say to to wash in this case. Yeah. The Hufayn. We will talk about this, inshallah, because yeah, the Hufayn normally is the ones that are made of jilt, of 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 leather, huh? Uh, the leather socks, the jawrabain, are uh, but inshallah. If it if it doesn't mention it, we will talk about it anyway, inshallah, at the end. And then he said, Al Arba'a except Nasai, Al Arba'a mean uh, Abu Dawud, Nasai, Ibn Majah, and Tirmidhi. So he said, Al Arba'a, meaning these four, except Nasai, reported from Al Mughira, meaning this, the four books, the Sunan, narrate, reported from Mughira that the Prophet said that the Prophet wiped over the upper part of his leather socks and the under part of its of uh, its leather, uh, of the leather socks and he said there is ba'af there is weakness in its chain of narrators so the hadith another hadith from al-mughira ibn shu'ba <coughs> says that the prophet has wiped over over and under the leather socks and he said this hadith, there is weakness in it. This hadith is weak for, for many reasons. One uh, of the reasons is the narrator, Walid ibn Muslim, uh, is mudallis. And he has a special way of doing tadlis. Uh, we call it tadlis taswiyah. If he doesn't, if Walid ibn Muslim narrates a hadith, and he doesn't say hadathana from the beginning to the end, his hadith is rejected. Because he will, he, he will take, what he will do, he will take the chain of narrators. Anyone that is weak in the chain of narrators, he will remove him. So, if he doesn't say, I heard, I heard, I heard, from the beginning to the end, his hadith is not accepted. <coughs> this is one, one, one reason why this hadith is da'if. The second reason, which uh, uh, Ahmed bin Hanbal mentioned, and Abu Dawud in his book when he narrated this hadith, is that the narrator of the hadith called Thawr bin Yazid, Thawr ibn Yazid never heard this hadith from Raja ibn Hayawa. This is uh, the other reason. The third reason is the hadith is narrated by the writer of Mughira ibn Shu'ba. The writer, the one who used to write for Mughira ibn Shu'ba. Now, we know that Mughira ibn Shu'ba had a writer called Warrad, and his hadith is narrated in Bukhari and Muslim. He is trustworthy in any Muslim. But doesn't mean that he had only one writer. He was a leader of Kufa. He must have had few writers to write for him. Uh, now that he did, nobody mentioned here that the writer was a uh, Warrad. Then it may be someone else that we don't know. This is three reasons which which make this hadith very weak, not only weak. One of them will be enough to make the hadith weak. <coughs> so uh, there is nothing. Uh, the hadith which is Sahih from Al-Mughira ibn Shaiba that the Prophet wiped over the, his leather socks, on the top. 
not from uh, the bottom. Hmm? Yeah, let me just finish the, the other hadith and then we talk about this uh, subject. The other hadith is narrated by Ali. He says, if the religion were based on opinion, if the religion were based on our opinion, it would be more, it would be more fitting to wipe the under parts of the leather socks rather than the upper, the upper. However, I have seen Allah Messenger wiping over the upper part of his leather socks. This hadith is narrated by Abu Dawood, he say with Isnad Hassan. Yes. Okay. Now, wiping over the socks. According to Abu Hanifa, uh, you have to wipe with minimum three fingers. That will be enough. Doesn't matter whether in top or under. According to Malik and Shafi'i, if you wipe uh, over the socks or under the socks only, it's wrong. You have to wipe over and under the socks. This is Malik and Shafi'i. Malik says if someone wipe under the socks only, he must do wudu again and repeat his prayer. Shafi'i say no, he doesn't have to. But he considered it not to be the right way to do the wiping. Now, the wiping has to be really anywhere. It doesn't have to be on the top. The top is the action of the Prophet. Allah ordered us to wipe on the, on, on the uh, foot. And uh, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet was not what we call mutakallif. I don't know how to explain this word. Mutakallif is to, to do something unnecessary which is not really necessary, huh? not really extreme, to go to, go to do something excessive. which is not really necessary. Huh? Excessive. Uh, you, you do some, like now, to do the wiping, <coughs> to do the wiping, uh, you have to, uh, you can wipe anywhere. And someone will go and lift, lift his foot and to the, to the uh, sink. Yeah, no, lift his feet. Make to to sure. reach to reach the the under mm. under the feet so you have to lift it. Lift it it will be like excessive uh, uh, extra unnecessary when you can work that. when you can do it on the just on the top <coughs> but if someone <coughs> if someone does it he's the wiping of the feet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wipe over the feet so uh, wipe the feet so you do it on the top underneath is fine you do it with three fingers or one finger or doesn't matter. Huh? Wiping, you don't have to do all the area. So what did uh, Abu Hanif forget the thing about three fingers from? Well, that is just uh, an opinion. Not the lead. No. When you, it's the same as the wipe, you just wipe a piece, you don't have to go... Yeah. Like yeah. That. Let's say someone is uh, want to wipe someone who is wearing socks, yeah. uh, shoes. Shoes does, that, that uh, don't cover uh, the ankles. So you don't have to wipe, you can't wipe over these uh, shoes. But he is wearing underneath uh, so, socks. So what you do, you, <coughs> you just wipe the, the area that, that you can. You don't have to open your shoes. Just put your finger inside the, the side, at the side for example. Because you can't reach the, the top of the feet yes, if it's tight. But you can reach the side. So even if you just wipe this bit? No, that is... I said this oh, area, oh, okay. this is the area that has to be from the ankle down, hmm. not up. So now you get um, these socks that are below the ankle. Yes. Do you, can you wipe them because they're below the ankle? No, you can't. You can't have to be above the ankle. It has to go. Low ankle socks yeah. Socks. Yeah. Oh, if you pull it up. It has to be up to the, the ankle. ankle. Yeah, yeah. at the time of, of, of the type, at the time of uh, wiping, <laughs> hmm? it has to cover the, the ankle. Yeah the ankle. If you take them off later, that is a different story, we'll talk about this as well. Yeah. However, the hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib here, uh, we didn't speak about the Isnad, he said the Isnad is Hassan. This hadith is narrated by, uh, the reason why he said it's Hassan, because it's narrated by someone called Abd Khair, Al-Hamadani. Abd Khair, Ibn uh, Ma'in said he is Thiqa, al uh, Ijli said he is Thiqa, and uh, some people spoke about him, but 
uh, they didn't really bring any proof. No? So the man, he is thiqa, his hadith is sahih. However, uh, there is another reason why the hadith will not be sahih. is because it's the narration of Abu Ishaq Sabi'i. Abu Ishaq Sabi'i is uh, Mudallis. Uh, Shu'ba said he is Mudallis. And even the narrator from him, Amash, is Mudallis as well. So that, uh, that, re- that reason will make the hadith uh, not uh, Hassan, but Da'if, weak. <coughs> the other hadith is about the timing. The hadith is about the timing for how long. Uh, narrated by Safwan <coughs> ibn Assal, he said, when we were on a journey, the Prophet used to command us not to remove our leather socks for washing for washing our feet in abolition for three days and three nights, even if we had to answer the call of nature or slept. However, in case of Janaba. He commanded us to remove the leather socks in order to take a complete ghusl. This hadith is reported by Nasa'i and Tirmidhi. And the wording of a Tirmidhi, he and Ibn Khuzayma, uh, uh, he and Ibn Khuzayma uh, graded this hadith to be sahih. So the hadith that Safwan bin Asal said when they were in trouble with the Prophet, he used to order them not to remove their socks. Uh, for three days except from except in even if, if, if we had to uh, if they had to answer the call of nature or if they slept and <coughs> and uh, if this uh, if they are in case of Janaba this hadith is the narration of Asim bin Abi Nujud Asim bin Bahdala Some people said he is thiqa, few people said he is thiqa, and many said that he is weak. So that's why some people consider this hadith to be hasan. <coughs> the truth about uh, Asim bin Abi Nujud, Asim bin Abi Nujud is this uh, narrator of Quran. The man who narrates Quran. You see when we read Warsh from Asim, Nafi'ah. Uh, And Asim, hmm? Asim bin Abi Nujud. This is the man who narrates the Quran. Uh, we, we, we take Quran from him. He is trustworthy when it comes to Quran. But most of these people who memorized Quran a lot was, was weak, were weak in hadith. Him and Hafs bin Mughira. Uh, Doesn't it make people get doubt about No, 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 no. They were so involved in reading Quran. Huh? so involved in Quran that they were making mistakes in hadith. They didn't really... They put they, they, they it yeah, but too. in Quran they were like the top. In Quran didn't come from one person. Hmm? Hmm. It is like uh, generations after generations. Huh? <laughs> Just when we say the, the, the narrations, yeah. huh? specific narrations like Warsh and Hafs, uh, like Warsh, uh, it comes from, from this person. But the Quran is, is uh, it's not from one person. So there is no doubt about the Quran at all. Uh, this hadith <coughs> is Ba'if. And uh, there are some similar, similar hadith like this that are Ba'if as well. Uh, I just read them first and then inshallah we go to the understanding of the hadith. The following hadith is narrated by Ali, the Prophet, and look at this hadith, because in some books, some books will say this hadith, Ali narrated, Ali said, the Prophet has said, yeah, many books of fiqh will mention like this, Ali said that the Prophet has said, but the hadith which is in Muslim is not like that. Ali, narrated by Ali, the Prophet, fixed, fixed. You see here, it's not the saying of the Prophet. It's Ali who is saying. Hmm? Narrated by Ali, the Prophet fixed the period of mas'h wiping over the leather socks 
for three days and nights for traveler and one day and a night for the resident person in town. This hadith is reported by Muslim. But he never said that the Prophet said three days. He said he fixed. This hadith uh, in Muslim is like this. Shuraih ibn Hani went to Aisha and asked her about wiping, wiping over the leather socks. She, said, she told him, go to Ali ibn Abi Talib and ask him. He used to travel with the Prophet. So he went to the Ali ibn Abi Talib and then he, he told him this. Uh, this hadith, there is, there is two different, there is two different, <coughs> there is two different uh, opinions about this hadith. Some say that this is the saying of the Prophet, some saying that this is the saying of Ali ibn Abi Talib himself. Like Ibn Abdul Bar say this hadith, some narrate this hadith to be like mawquf, not marfu'. Some, when they narrate this hadith, they say Ali ibn Abi Talib said three days for the traveler, not the Prophet saying. So it will become just the saying of a Sahabi. But some say the Prophet. The narrations in Muslim are where the Prophet, that the Prophet has fixed, yeah? Uh, and some people say the ones who made it the saying of the Prophet some say the ones who made it the saying of the Prophet are stronger than the one who made it the saying of Ali ibn Abi Talib that is as well something that is not true because the ones who made it the saying of Ali ibn Abi Talib even though they are strong like uh, uh, Abdul Razzaq Abdul Razzaq from Sufyan al-Thawri from Amr ibn Qais al-Mala'i. Now, Amr ibn Qais al-Mala'i is not really well known. And Sufyan al-Thawri is a modellist. And Abd al-Razzaq, whenever he narrates from Sufyan al-Thawri, he is not, uh, his narration is not accepted. Because he makes mistakes. He didn't memorize the hadith of Sufyan al-Thawri properly. He is himself thiqa, trustworthy. But when it comes to Sufyan al-Thawri, he didn't memorize his hadith properly. And he makes mistakes. So, uh, so the hadith, those who said made it the saying of Ali ibn Abi Talib are stronger in this case. And these make this hadith not the saying of the Prophet. Uh, there is another hadith from Khuzayma, Khuzayma ibn Thabit as well. There is another hadith from Khuzayma ibn Thabit that the Prophet has said for the traveler three days and uh, for the resident, one day. This hadith, he didn't bring it here. That hadith as well is uh, weak because it's the narration of someone called Al-Jadali. And... So this hadith, that's a Muslim that you're saying that's weak as well, yeah? This hadith, I told you, it's the saying of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Most likely the saying of Ali ibn Abi Talib, not the saying of the Prophet. However, even if it was the say, uh, if it was like marfu' to the Prophet, he never said the words of the Prophet. He said the Prophet has fixed Hmm? The hadith of Khuzaym ibn Thabit uh, that the Prophet has said three days for the traveler and one day for the resident that hadith is weak because it's the narration of someone called Al-Jadali Jadali, this man is uh, Majhul is not known and uh, Ahmed ibn Hanbal said Al-Jadali never met Khuzaym ibn Thabit and he considered the hadith to be Daif then the reason I'm going to jump to hadith to go to this last one uh, just because it, it talks about timing as well. Narrated Ubaid ibn Umara. No, no. The hadith of Ubay ibn Umara. Say Ubaid. Narrated Ubay ibn Umara. Uh, I asked O oh Messenger of Allah, may I wipe over the Khufain? The Prophet replied, yes. I asked for one day, he replied, yes. I again asked, and for two days, he replied, yes. I again asked three days, he replied yes, and as long as you wish. This hadith is narrated by Abu Dawud, who said it is not strong. Uh, Ahmed bin Hanbal said the isnad of this hadith is unknown. And the same thing said Daraqutni. Uh, there are three men who are not known in the hadith, one atop on the other. 
up to this Abi Umara who we don't Ubay ibn Umara. And then there is uh, even the narrator from this unknown people is uh, Yahya ibn Ayyub who is weak. Uh, so this hadith is da'if. Uh, the hadith just about the timing. <laughs> there is two different opinion about the timing. Uh, the majority, the majority say that you can wipe over the, your your socks three days if you are traveling, and one day if you are resident. Uh, this is contradicted by Umar ibn Khattab, his son Abdullah ibn Umar, Uqba ibn Amr, Sahabi, Hassan al-Basri, Malik, and Layth ibn Sa'ad. These people say that wiping over the socks is, has no limit. You can wipe as long as you want. Well, the delay that there is no limit from the Prophet. It's either they didn't know the hadith, or they consider the hadith to be ta'if. Uh, not Umar ibn Khattab, because he didn't know the hadith. He doesn't know hadith ta'if and sahih. For him, it's easy to... If either he heard... He, he didn't know this hadith, of course. If they were ta'if, he definitely didn't hear them, hear about them. The hadith ta'if are the ones that are made up later. Yeah, so, so either, either Malik didn't know this hadith, him and the late Ibn Sa'ad, or he considered this hadith to be life. Uh, the truth is, I told you about this hadith. Uh, the one that they say three, three days, the one that say the hadith three days, like the hadith of uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, many many narrators made it the saying of Ali rather than the saying of the Prophet. The hadith of Safwan ibn Asal is the narrator, narration of uh, Asim ibn Abi Nujud, who is weak. The hadith of Khuzayn ibn Thabit is the narration of Al-Jadali, who, uh, uh, who Ahmed ibn Hanbal himself said that he never met Khuzayn ibn Thabit, which makes the hadith uh, broken, the chain broken, so it's taif. And the hadith that says the opposite is da'if as well. So we are left about, you do the wiping over the feet, but for how long? So those who consider the hadith to be sahih will say three days. For the traveler and one day for the resident. Those who don't, like Malik and Shafi'i and uh, Layth ibn Sa'ad, will say without no limit. Of course, the limit will be Friday. Because you have to take shower, and shower you have you have to take, so it will be seven days in normal circumstances. Uh, <coughs> there, is, there is no yeah. even the take the shower of uh, Friday is wajib for the traveler or for the resident. So there's no uh, hadith sahih about this. About the three days. About the timing of how long it should be or anything. If it was, if there was hadith sahih, really the majority shouldn't have taken it. Why? Because if you remember last time we have spoken about the Mufhum al-Mukhalafa, we say the majority consider number, Mufhum al-Mukhalafa, the numbers doesn't mean anything when it comes to numbers. If the Prophet say, if someone dies and 40 people pray Janaza, he will be forgiven. Doesn't mean that 20 will not be if only 20 pray or that he will not be forgiven yeah here is same thing when you say three days if the prophet said three days they will have to say because they say numbers don't mean anything they will have to say three days doesn't mean that five days is not okay and here they have opinion and they don't have proof and we still consider i heard from someone i can't remember who but they said that it has to be within like the day one day and one night. Yeah, for, for the resident, yes. For the resident. Yeah. As long as, huh? as, long as, as long as you don't remove them. Yeah, as long as you don't remove them. But you have to remove them from for, for, at least for Friday. For Friday sorry, shower. Said, or someone if Janaba, for example. You said Friday is uh, uh, a wage or a wage. Okay, just tell me what, what does it mean. If the Prophet says, what does it mean? 
Okay, so the Prophet has said this hadith in Bukhari. No, 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 huh? I don't know. I thought before I thought it's just mustahab. No. So it means you, you can make it on Thursday. No, you have to do it on Friday. Huh? However, if you don't do it on Friday, you have to do it on Saturday. Because there is another hadith that says that it's Allah right that to do a shower once every seven days. So if you do it on Friday and then you don't do another shower, which is until Friday, and you missed it on Friday, then you have to do it on Saturday because it will be eight days. If you don't do it Saturday, you have to do it on Sunday, Monday. And we will continue inshallah next week because there is other now. <laughs> so every hadith talking about three days, which have one day is by. The we were with the Nasha al the wiping over the hook, the leather socks. Last time we mentioned this hadith from Ali ibn Abi Talib about the timing of the Mas'ha al khuffain where he said that if where, where Ali ibn Abi Talib said uh, the Prophet fixed fixed the period of Mas'ha over the leather socks for three days and nights for a traveler and one day and a night for the resident person so he didn't say here how the Prophet fixed it he said the Prophet fixed he never gave us the actual wording of the Prophet. And this is something very important to have the wording of the Prophet because the understanding of people are different. And the wording of the Prophet is the religion, not the understanding of the people. The religion that Allah has protected is the wording of the Prophet is the dhikr, which is the sunnah, which, is the, which means the saying of the Prophet himself. This hadith we say that it's narrated by a Muslim. And then uh, there was the hadith of Safwan ibn Asal before that uh, as well. That says that the Prophet, uh, that it says when we were on a journey with the Prophet, he used to command us not to remove our leather socks for three days and three nights, even if we had to uh, answer the call of nature. So it's the hadith of Safwan ibn Asal as well fixed, says that it's three nights for the and three days for the traveler, but one night and one day for the resident. Similar hadith with the hadith of Khuzayma ibn Thabit and Abu Bakra. <coughs> now the thing here is we don't or in all of this hadith, those, the hadith that is sahih, like hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib, there are other, other hadith ba'if, like the hadith of Khuzayma ibn Thabit, hadith of Abi Bakra, and the hadith of Safwan ibn Asal, the narration of Asim ibn Bahdala. The hadith ba'if, we, we shouldn't take it into consideration. But the hadith sahih, like the hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib, we don't have the actual wording of the Prophet. And even if we had the wording of the Prophet that says, if the Prophet said, if the Prophet said that it's three days for the traveler, then another thing comes here. When we were talking about Mafhum al if you remember, the understanding of the opposite. Mafhum al when it comes to numbers, what? First, the Mufhum al Mukhalafa, uh, the majority don't, you know, the, not every one take it. The, ham, the Ahnaf and the Zahiris don't accept it. Yeah? But even those who take Mufhum al Mukhalafa, they don't agree all the time where, to, where they should take it, where not. They say, when it comes to number, Mufhum al when it comes to numbers, Many as well, from those who take it, don't accept it. Like for example, when the Prophet says, if someone, if a dead person, 40 people pray Janazah on, uh, on, on, on a dead person, 
all of them asking Allah to intermediate, inter, intermediate, inter, intercede, intercede with Allah for, for this person, Allah will forgive him. Nobody will say that if they are less than 40 or more than 40, Allah will not forgive him. Yeah? So this number doesn't mean that less or more the person will not be forgiven. Same thing like the hadith of the Prophet where he say that it's not halal, it's not allowed for a woman that believes in Allah and that a woman that believes in Allah and the day of, uh, of in the hereafter that she is ma she la yahillu limra'atin tu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir it's not halal for a woman that believes in the Allah and the day uh, the hereafter to travel three days except with the mahram do we understand that a woman who believes in Allah and the day the, 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 the hereafter can travel more than three days or less than three days even less than three days she is not allowed and more than three days she is not allowed so this hadith even though they don't, we don't have the actual wording from the Prophet we will pr which prevent us from taking it <coughs> doesn't mean that more than three days you shouldn't wipe over your socks later or less than three days you shouldn't wipe for relax we need a separate dalil for that and we don't have it and this is the, the madhab of Imam Malik this is the madhab of the Imam Malik the others, the Bahiris, Hanbalis, Shafi'is uh, they say that it's, they fix it with three days the hadith of Safwan is the narration of Asim ibn Abi Nujud. Asim ibn Abi Nujud, there is a big difference about him. But even those who say he is trustworthy, they don't say he says it is like about. Because they agree that he makes mistakes. He is the narrator of Quran. He is the one who wars on Asim when we read Quran. You see, he, he was. Imam in Qira'a that many of those people who narrate Quran, who read Quran, the narrators of Quran, we take from Quran, they were weak in hadith because they were so busy with Quran that they didn't, uh, they, they, they were weak in Quran hadith. And not all of them, but some of them. And this one, <coughs> this one, Hafs ibn Mughir al Asadi. Uh, you see, we're not worried, it, Hafs. That person as well is not accepted in hadith. So uh, the uh, <coughs> Asim ibn Abi Nujud, some people may say he is a man of Bukhari, that Bukhari narrates in his book from him, but he doesn't narrate from him when he is alone, <coughs> only when he, there is someone, mutaba, what we call, there is, he has a backup. When he narrates hadith alone, Bukhari doesn't take it. So doesn't uh, mention it. all the hadith that Bukhari mentioned in his book from Asim are the hadith that there was uh, there were other people that narrated it with him uh, this is regarding the timing of course of the uh, I just go through the hadith if there is anything you just stop me yes Malik by himself he if there's some no, 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 no. We are not talking about Mufhum Mukhalifa. We said Abu Hanifa doesn't take Mufhum Mukhalifa. We said Malik doesn't say, it's not because of Mufhum Mukhalifa or anything. Malik uh, is, doesn't say, doesn't consider timing when it comes to wiping over the socks. He say you can wipe as long as, as you want. Four days, five days, seven days. Uh, you don't have to remove your socks. That's what Malik says. Shafi'i Shafi say three days. Uh, the following hadith is narrated by Thawban. He said, Allah Messenger sent out a Sariya. Uh, Sariya means a small group of soldiers. On a military expedition. 
and commanded them to wipe over the turbans and leather socks. This hadith is reported by Ahmed and Abu Dawud al-Hakim graded it to be sahih. <laughs> this hadith is uh, <coughs> that the Prophet sent a sariya. It's not, it's not going to give us any new, new information really. Uh, because we have been reading hadith about we, we all know that you can wipe over your leather socks and over your turban. That's, uh, and this hadith it says that the Prophet commanded them to wipe over the turbans, which is known. We, we have the hadith from al mughira al Shaba in Bukhari and the hadith of Bilal in the Sunan. Uh, the thing here is, and leather socks. This hadith says in Arabic, أَنْ يَمْسَحُوا عَلَى الْعَصَائِبِ يَعْنِي الْعَمَائِمْ Over the asaib, which means the turbans. والتساخين. And the tasakhin. And then he said, يَعْنِي الْخِفَافِ Meaning the leather socks. However, in the books of Arabic, uh, when we go to the books of Arabic, Arabic language, like the dictionaries of Arabic language that the scholar of hadith or the fiqh take from, uh, these books do, don't say, don't agree with this explanation, tasakhin to be uh, the leather socks. Tasakhin, they explain it to be a form of something that you put on the head. That some people, the clergymen, the people who work for the government, like judges, and they used to put them on their head. Uh, it looks like kalansuwa. This... Uh, yeah, so it's not... Uh, but here... Uh, Abu Dawud from one of the narrators he said that the tasakhin mean khifaf the people of the Arabic language don't agree with that uh, and then a hadith, the following hadith narrated by Umar in a mawquf hadith meaning Umar is saying not this hadith is narrated by Umar but it's the saying of Umar not from Umar from the Prophet so it, this is uh, he's saying himself. And also, this same hadith narrated from uh, Anas, but it's marfu'ah, meaning from Anas, from the Prophet. This hadith says, if one of you performs ablution and puts on his two leather socks, let him perform mas'h over them and pray in them. And he may not take them off during washing for ablution, if he so wishes, except in case of bathing, uh, for Janaba. <coughs> this hadith is uh, narrated by Daraqutni and Hakim and he considered it to be Sahih. Other people don't agree with this. Uh, there, are, there is a man which is not really known. Uh, but still, this hadith doesn't give us more as, as well any more information because the wiping of the, over the, the socks uh, over the uh, leather socks is known from other hadith. Taking them for Janaba is definitely an obligation because Janaba you can't wipe, you have to wash all your body. And the hadith of Abu Bakr narrated Abu Bakr, the Prophet gave permission for the traveler to perform mas'h wiping over his leather socks for three days and nights and for a non-traveler for a day and a night if he had purified himself. Uh, if he had purified himself by performing abolition and then put them on. Yeah, if he had purified himself and them and then put them on in state of purity. Reported by Daraqutni and he graded this hadith to be uh, Ibn Khuzayma graded this hadith to be Sahih. Uh, this hadith as well uh, other than Ibn Khuzayma consider this hadith not to be sahih and this hadith is exactly similar to the hadith not really similar but we have spoken about this when we spoke about the hadith of the uh, of Mughira ibn Shu'bah then when he was with the Prophet in travel in trouble then the Prophet performed abolition when he was going about to wipe on his feet al Mughira ibn Shu'bah wanted to take off his leather socks so the Prophet told him leave them I put them in 
Tahiratayn. Uh, purified. So we say that many, the majority understood from this hadith that put them purified, meaning after he performed ablution. But some understood a different thing, that he put them in the <coughs> leather socks where when there was no dirt on them, they were clean. There was no dirt, something dirty on the feet. And we said this explanation is more likely, huh? is more strong. Why? Because a Muslim is always pure, purified. Uh, the the need, the proof for that, the Prophet met Abu Huraira in the street. Abu Huraira was in state of Janaba, and then he ha hid himself from the Prophet. When he met him again, the Prophet asked him, the Prophet asked him, why did he, didn't he go talk to him? He said that he was in state of Janaba, and he didn't want to touch or to talk to the Prophet on that state. The Prophet told him, in al-Muslim alayanjus, the believer, the Muslim, doesn't get dirty or unpurified, unpurified. So the, if he is not impurified, he is not najis, that means he is purified. That while he was in state of Janaba. You understand all what's the mean Janab, what man, Janaba mean? Mm -hmm. Janaba mean sexual, sexual impurity. No, sexual impurity. Yeah? So even Abu Huraira was in state of sexual impuri impurity, the Prophet told him that he is not <coughs> impure, impurified. So he was purified. If he was purified, that means every part of his body was purified. So we can't say that the Prophet, when he said that I put my feet inside the, the khuf were purified, that means he, he had wudu. Even if he had not wudu, if he didn't have wudu, he still was purified. So we can't take from that hadith any dalil that only you would do a wiping over your leather socks only if you put them while you have wudu. Would it be safer to be able to say socks? Well, if you are, of course, when you don't, when you are not convinced, always you, uh, you have to look at the matter, and then sometimes you don't what you are. Uh, what you hear is not convincing enough for you so always uh, it's better to be to, to, to take the safe side but then without making it an obligation on other people and then without this is the thing is when we taking the safe side is if someone doesn't know something is to take the safe side and not to discuss. He can discuss to learn, but not to, I don't know something, I just heard some people saying something, <coughs> or I hear, but then I start arguing <coughs> hmm? without any knowledge. Knowledge is if you have, if you can say no, you are wrong because Allah has said something different or Prophet has said something different. If you say someone else, the majority has said something different, or Shafi'i says something different, or my Sheikh has said something different, and that is not knowledge. What the majority has said is not knowledge. What Shafi'i has said is not knowledge. What your Sheikh has said is not knowledge. If you say Shafi'i said, that Allah said, that the Prophet said, that is the knowledge. In that case, if you have knowledge, you can discuss, you can argue, you can but uh, yeah, it's fine to take the safe side or the when <coughs> you are not sure about something. <coughs> and then there is the hadith of uh, Ubay ibn Imara. Hadith narrated by Ubay ibn Imara. He said, I asked the Messenger of Allah. He said, O Messenger of Allah, may I wipe over my khufain, my two khufs, my uh, leather socks? The Prophet replied, yes. I asked for one day, 
He replied, yes. I said again. And two days, he replied, yes. And I again asked. And for three days, he replied, yes. And as long as you wish. This hadith is narrated by Abu Dawud, who said it is not strong. This hadith is narrated by Abu Dawud. And uh, uh, he said this hadith is not strong. Uh, Ahmed bin Hanbal and Abu Hatim and Daraqutni and Nasai and Ibn Hibban and others say this hadith is weak. Ahmed bin Hanbal said that uh, the man in the hadith is are unknown. This hadith is narrated by Yahya ibn Ayyub who is Daif, not according to, to everybody, but he was, uh, but from three people in one, uh, someone called Abdul Rahman, Abdul Rahman, son of, there is no even, who is this Abdul Rahman, from uh, Yazid ibn Muhammad, from uh, three people in one go, huh? we don't know who are these people. So this hadith is definitely Daif. And similar hadith, there are other hadith that uh, similar to this one, but they are Daif as well. <coughs> so there is uh, no ha clear hadith from the saying of the Prophet and Sahih that give us timing, exact timing about the wiping on the Khufain, on the leather socks or in, on others, even the, the normal socks. <coughs> the chapter 6 is about the nullification of wudu. Before I start that, if there is any questions about this Mas'ha al Khufain, <coughs> there are many things that comes that derives from this hadith. Uh, I'm not going to uh, things that derive from this hadith for the people who say that the mas'h that the wiping is three days for example when these three days should be what, when we start counting these three days for those who say three days when are we going to start counting these three days is it from the time that you put your socks or from the time that you lose wudu after putting the socks or from the time that you start the wudu, the first wudu. There is different opinions about this. The right opinion is if you take the hadith which is from the when the person does the first wudu. If someone loses wudu at asr ta after asr but then he doesn't do wudu until after Maghrib then he st it's already he started at night so that will be one night and then the following day will be the first day and then another night, another day, another night, another day for traveler or one night and then those because those who say since he loses wudu like the Shafi'is they will say if he lost wudu after us and then he has done wudu after Maghrib, for him is over. His day is gone, his night is gone. So after Fajr, he must do wudu again. Of course, there is different opinion that he can go and then until Asr again, second day, because half day and half day will make one day. <coughs> but uh, uh, we are not to, to talk about every species, we're just going through the hadith, really and explain what's in the hadith. Anything that is not in the hadith, we are not going to talk about it, unless you, you have, uh, you, you want to ask a question, or you have a comment, or you want to discuss something. Other than that, I will just go through the hadith. Whatever in the hadith, I will mention it. Do they need to be made by leather? Yeah, this is another thing. The hadith of the Khufain, whether to have to be the socks, whether to have to be with leather, leather, made of leather or not. Even this, there is the different opinions about it. And now, uh, there is hadith which is in Tirmidhi that the Prophet has wiped over his jawarabain. Jawarab means the socks, normal socks. 
that are made of this hadith is the same hadith of Al-Mughira ibn Shu'bah that's why Yahya ibn Sa'id al-Khattan and others consider this hadith to be da'if because the hadith is known from Mughira ibn Shu'bah to be that he, the Prophet, wiped over his leather socks leather socks, not Jawarabay, not the normal socks and this hadith is narrated by Sufyan Thawri who is Mudallis from Abu Qais al-Audi Abu Qais Abdurrahman ibn Tharwan from Hazil ibn Sharahbil from al Mughira ibn Shu'bah Abu Qais al-Audi is da'if even though Bukhari narrated from him one hadith or two he still uh, Ahmed ibn Hanbal and others consider him to be da'if and uh, but the ayah when it tells the ayah that mentions the wiping over the feet is general the ayah says فَمْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلِكُمْ wipe over your heads and your feet now if someone says why don't I have why can't I then wipe over my feet without anything on them that's because the Prophet saw the Sahaba wiping over their feet and he said وَيْلٌ لِلْعَقَبِ مِنَ النَّارِ go to the hills from fire so that made uh, so wash, wiping over the feet, bare feet, is haram. If the feet are covered by anything, we can wipe over the feet then. Whether it's uh, leather socks or socks made from anything. Of course, Shafi'i, Shafi one of these who consider the wiping <coughs> on the normal socks to be allowed, but he m mentioned a condition here that it, sh it, ha it must be very thick. And that is a condition that is... What about if it's torn? Torn, yeah. And that is another thing. If there is uh, like uh, sh uh, holes on the... Yeah, and that, that's something that, for example, uh, Abdul Taymiyyah and uh, Ibn al Qayyim mm -hmm. gave this answer. They said, it is very difficult to think that the Sahaba uh, that had all of them to those that uh, the Prophet uh, ordered them to, to wipe over their feet that uh, they had new socks or leather socks that has no uh, holes on, on them <laughs> as long as they are uh, called socks and they are covering the feet really but I don't think that uh, uh, small hole or something will uh, it's difficult to think that uh, someone will, will have that th th these people that to whom uh, the Prophet has ordered uh, to wipe over their socks, they had all new socks.